go back to LeBron and what happened in the Sunday media avail, uh, Isaiah. And that was where he was public enemy number one in the Bay Area. Clay challenged him in his press conference. Uh, Spates tweeted out that baby bottle emoji. I wonder if a player, even of that stature, saying he took the high road is affected by something like that. Well, definitely he's affected by it and also inspired by it. And, you know, when you're talking about LeBron James, you're talking about one of maybe seven or eight people who have done what he's done in all leagues. So he commands a certain amount of respect on and off the floor. So when he's disrespected like that in such a manner, he feels like he's got to go out on the floor and prove it. And he did just that in game five. He had a monster game. And, you know, you say you want to let sleeping dogs lie, you know, you have definitely got his attention now, and you've woken LeBron James up to a, even a greater level. He was already playing at a high level. But when you inspire the great ones and you poke the bear, so to speak, then they respond. And they don't only respond just for one game. I think this is going to be a game six and a game seven where LeBron James is going to play at a very, very high level. Bones, I want to ask you about something that you said in our post game, and, and even for a player of LeBron's stature, you said he got his confidence going early because his, his outside shot was working early, and that seemed to set the tone. Well, I, I felt that way. I felt like Golden State in their defensive scheme, without Draymond Green and without all the switching, they were being flat on a lot of the screen and rolls, and he could spot the areas where he could get to to shoot his jumper. He made two threes, scored 12 points in the first quarter, and I felt like the confidence for him was established there. In games one through four, LeBron James was 11 of 39 outside of the paint. In the fifth game, he was 9 of 21. But all of that, in my opinion, happened in the first 12 minutes to get him going, again, in recognizing how Golden State was playing him, and then Kyrie fed off of that. J.R. Smith had all 10 of his points in the first quarter, and Cleveland played a very confident road game behind those monumental efforts of those two star players. And now it's up to Draymond Green returning to slow down the, uh, the freight train of LeBron. Meanwhile, for Kyrie Irving, trending upward over the past three games, uh, games of 30, 34, and 41. Uh, last game afterward, Bones, it was Clay Thompson who did a really good job defensively saying, he kind of had my number. I mean, there was there was really nothing he could do when a player gets that torching well, hot. Great, great offense will beat good defense, and good defense is what Clay was playing. But we're talking about Kyrie Irving on this huge upswing with regards to his game and his efficiency, averaging 35 and six assists over the last three games in the NBA Finals. Another great number for him is 23 assists to just 13 turnovers. That's something that his counterpart Steph Curry has struggled with. And then these isolation plays, he was just fantastic 10 isos in that game five nine of them were single covered so he had enough room out there on the floor to operate get into rhythm jump shots and boy was he spectacular 17 of 24 and made some high degree of difficulty attempts and got himself into an incredible rhythm yeah and when you plan this late in the season and you got this kind of rhythm going particularly in the finals there you have so much confidence and you feel so confident in your game that you feel like there's nobody that can really stop you. And he's doing it against a Clay Thompson, who's one of the best defenders in the NBA. So anytime he sees someone else on him other than Clay, his confidence is, is skyrocketed. And I look for Kyrie Irving and LeBron James to continue playing at a very high level because these are two players that once they get ignited and once you turn on a fire, they don't easily just shut off. I mean, these aren't guys that, that have 40-point games and then follow it up with nine. <laughs> you know, these are guys that have a 40, and they may follow it up with a 30 or a 35, but very rarely do they drop down to the teens. Well, and, and as you were saying, it looked like in the second half, because he got so hot, it was affecting the offense of both Clay and Steph in terms of the defense.